Hey, there we are. Sorry, some technical issues apparently. Hey, you breakable. Welcome to the chat. How's it going? We're back for another art stream. <clears throat> Feels like it's so long ago, even though it was like last week. Let me make sure that we got everything uh, set up here. Still screen. There we go. Test, test, testing the test. Hell yeah. Should be all good now. How is everyone doing? Can, uh, we can start with a little update of what I did since last week, right? I think last week we spent a whole bunch of time working on uh, trees, right? Uh, well, not the big trees, but like the smaller foliage, right? That was still based on like the uh, the oak trees that we were making. So we've been focusing on like the smaller trees and the saplings. We got like a whole bunch of those in, which are looking quite nice. Uh, it seems that some stuff got screwed up again since last week, so we'll need to fix that, but I'm going to be worried about that. This week, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to jump into uh, probably making some some weeds and some, some smaller variations of, of grass and like little bits of foliage that we can scatter in between the grass. Because the, the, issue, the issue here is that uh if we go to like a section of grass let me have a look oh and also let's uh let's set this back to midday so that we can actually see what we're doing so the grass looks good right like i'm happy with the look of the grass it's just it feels too uniform and it doesn't have like anything to break it up right so that's what we're probably going to be looking at today just Seeing if we can break that up with like little bits of clover, little bits of just weeds and maybe some small flowers or anything like that. Um, because that's going to be really useful if you want to do some blending in like the middle of the forest. It's going to look way better. And also just over here, you know. It's going to look quite nice. Yeah, that's what, uh, what we're going to do today. Since... Uh, since last time, make sure that the music is not too loud. Uh, since last time, we've actually actually not done that much. I've honestly mostly spent my time working on uh, the textures a little bit, like making it like a little bit, a little bit more uh, good looking, I guess. Mainly by upping upping the normal intensity and like cleaning up like all the variations that we had lying around. So now the system is actually like really simple uh, compared to what we were using before. So I have like a couple of variations here. Actually, I have like a clean version, I have an old version, and then I have two different variations of worn. And what they, what they do is just they change the material instance just a little bit to make it look more worn or, uh, yeah, just like it helps give it a different look. So if we apply this one, it has more dirt, it has more moss, like the color itself is a little bit older, right? And then if we slap on the clean one, it looks totally different. So that we can, we can have some variations with just like really quick like material instances. I think, I think that system is working really well. Hi, Nikori. How are you doing? Hi, Arthur. How are you today? Welcome to the chat. Happy to have you all here. But yeah, that's honestly what I spent most of my time on. And then I've also made uh, a couple of quick assets here. I like a quick couple of compositions for like the carpenter area because that's the, the area that we're currently focusing on, right? Um, so yeah. That's been, uh, been most of the time, honestly. 
we have like a, a little like a couple of little workshops here i've made like a saw pit as well so this is meant for like two people for like the the big logs where they push like a big log onto it and then they they hold like a big saw and they work in conjunction to like saw this thing in half uh, this is not the saw that is used for that, so we'll need to make like a new saw for it, but the base is there. And then I made some some wood piles, just some random stuff that we can scatter as well. So yeah, that was like a quick update. Oh yeah, I made these things as well, just with existing assets. So yeah, that's just like a quick update of what, we, what I did uh, after the stream. So not too much going on here it's just basically doing some level art and like making some cool compositions all right today we're gonna be looking into some weeds um where is my ref bring up my ref i don't think i've actually i don't think i've actually looked for weeds or anything like that some moss, got some rocks. Yeah, we could actually scatter like really simple, like very low foliage in between as well. Yeah, it's stuff like this, right? Like just some ground clutter. Be quite awesome. So I think first, first thing that we need to do, let's have a look at some. Uh, some um references right so i'm honestly just gonna do this here then we'll just have a look at what we can do so we got some clovers here that's already looking pretty nice let's get those in Yeah, how is everyone doing in the chat in the meantime? Everyone feeling well? Everyone doing doing good? Oh yeah, this is from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. That stuff is quite nice. I think we can honestly just project that down almost, I think. Let's actually have a look. some rocks in there some smaller bits of foliage hmm okay. good morning rod how's it going uh yeah i'm doing good feeling good yeah we're, we're gonna be we're gonna be making some uh ground foliage gonna see if i can make some like interesting little things that we can just scatter around you know <laughs> this the search algorithm is so used to me that i just throwing up like a bunch of unreal engine stuff already but yeah how are you doing rod how are you doing Oh, by the way, how's my sound as well today? Because we ran into some technical issues in the beginning. I'm good. Slash working. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Those are just some like random ferns, right? I actually kind of like how random they are. Maybe we need to adjust the ferns that we have because they're a little bit too pristine. I like these ones. They're cool. So, uh, ground foliage. Sound is good, bro. Okay, it's good. Thanks, Rod.
actually I have a look here right so oak forest uh, actually see if we can find yeah so those are all like small oak trees which is kind of cool we can easily create those This is, the, this is the thing that I love, right? Like, it's kind of bushy, and it kind of has, like, a very dense feeling. So maybe maybe that would be something to explore in the future, where we can make, like, bushy, bushy stuff. So yeah, we got some... Let's actually have a look at some clovers. I don't want to see all this pristine stuff you know give me yeah something like this got some of these these are just like generic round stuff you know that we can just scatter i think that's also gonna look pretty good even though it's relatively close to the clovers right so maybe we need to be careful with the shape of these because they might blend a little bit too well together <clears throat> what if we look for weeds? Okay, apparently that's the thing. Yeah, this sort of stuff is cool. That in there has like a nice unique shape, right? And then maybe... Yeah, maybe we'll do some... Leaf weeds... Stuff is cool as well. Let's see if we can just get a collection. And then uh we'll we'll see what we need to make from them, right? It's cool. I'm mainly looking for the shape, right? I'm not don't really care too much about like the, the actual naming convention or anything like that at this point. And then we can make like small stuff like this. It's gonna look awesome. Okay, I think let's get some generic stuff in, right? So something like this as well. Uh, hmm. What was this one? I had a pretty good one looking here, right? This one. Oh, this one. Yeah. Let's just add that one in here then i think if we just scale it all same level these two they're they're a pair yeah nice so we got like a good collection now it's time to time to get into it Okay, I'm gonna move that to the side somewhere. This can go, and then we're gonna start modeling. What I'll usually do with this is I'll already start out with a plane, right? And this plane is gonna act as our low poly that we're gonna be projecting everything down on. So what I'll need to do with this is I'll just need to make everything within those bounds, and then I can kind of already do the UV layout as I'm modeling as well. Super useful. But we don't have to worry about it too much. Um, let's see. Let's set the visibility to wire. It's good. And you can kind of see like we got like a, a nice square looking thing that kind of acts as our UV layout. Pretty cool. And now we just need to make some foliage. Start out with some simple stuff, right? Oh yeah, in the meantime, if this is your first time being here, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, 
if, if you're wondering what I'm doing or if you have any industry questions or if you're unsure about like I don't know your current path in the industry or career advice or anything like that feel free to uh, ask any questions surrounding that would love to help maybe I'll need to add that to the the theme as well right to like the the stream graphics so that it's it's uh, already apparent. So, two here is I want to get like a base shape going first. We got the base shape, and then I'll duplicate link this, and we'll rotate it 120 degrees. Because then, then we have like this nice uh, clover pattern already. And now, because they're instanced, we can just start moving stuff about and we have the full clover already so this is gonna go inwards at this point like we, we also don't really have to care about the geometry right because this is just a high poly as long as we get the shapes right all we need to be worried about at this point It's actually pretty simple. Like what we'll what we'll probably do. Uh, let me actually put this up here. So the way to uh, what we'll probably do here is we'll apply something like uh, solidify, right? So that we get some depth into it as well. Let's make sure that everything at this point is still flat. Uh, and then what we can do as well is. We can do like a subdivision service that it makes like everything nice and round and like nice and smooth. And then what we'll do is we'll just copy the modifiers from this. Right, so. Let's squish that a little bit. That a little bit as well. Maybe what we'll do something like that. So what does this shape actually do? It's fairly straight, right? It kind of it kind of has some some move to it. And it also has like a line going through the middle. So let's see. Let me just merge this again. And then let's see if we can actually like replicate that by adding a bevel and then pushing it down as well. It's actually something like this on. What am I looking for? High quality rim. Rim. Oh, okay. Let's see. Oh, I thought there was like a keep sharp option so that we can we can kind of avoid it from going. I guess we can do it manually, right? Yeah, so something like this.
And now, because we have this UV plane already laid out, we can kind of just move it about and scale it to where we want it, right? And then what I'll do is we'll just create like a couple of variations, right? Just something, uh, if we... Is it again? We go into relations, make single user data. Yeah, now they're no longer instance, right? So we can we can start moving them about and actually create like some variations. Maybe we'll have because this is all pristine stuff, right? Oh yeah, what we actually need to do is like move it in 3D as well. Sometimes I forget that we're working in 3D, right? Need to kind of keep that in mind so that we can get like some nicer normals and some nicer variation. We have one that's kind of like a bit more... Right? Have this one go down a bit. And then this is going to give us some nice variation between the two. What you also need to keep in mind if you're doing this layout is that you kind of want to have a square around everything, right? Because if we like try to pack it super tightly, what we actually need to do then is also add like a lot of geometry to cut them out. Where if we, if we just want to... Because ideally, we just want to keep the geometry as simple as possible, right? Um, so in that case, that would ideally mean like just a square or something like that. And that means that we'll have to have like straight lines between or like a little bit of space between these meshes. What do we do? Let's do one with two. This stuff is kind of all over the place, right? So maybe... If you just angle them as well. You push them in a little bit more. But what I'm trying to do is I'm actually trying to make the most out of like 3D shapes. That's what I'm trying to do here. Like, I'm trying to make the most of it with, with, like, simple variations, right? That's all you need for this kind of stuff. And then what we're actually going to do is, because it's projected down, like, the normals are going to look, like, completely different. And we can actually fake, like, a little bit of variation that way. Rotation doesn't matter because what we'll do is we'll cut this out into like squares, right? And then we can rotate those squares as our low polys. We don't have to worry about it that much. Because this is going to be like fairly, fairly small, right? So I'm not going to think about the scale too much because that depends on how much we're going to fill this all up. We kind of we kind of got some clovers. Maybe maybe we'll do like another one with like four, right? To keep it like super stereotypical. We'll just squish it a little bit. Also, a handy tip, like. You probably know that you can scale by like an axis, right? But if you press that axis again, so I'm pressing like X twice, it actually takes the rotation of the actual object into account. It will align itself to the object. Super handy. You could do stuff like this, right? Where you 
We kind of move it a little bit apart. And that's just pressing G and then in this case Shift Z twice. And if you press Shift Z, uh, what you're actually doing is taking all the axes apart from the one that you selected, right? So in this case, we're only taking X and Y because we're pressing Shift Z. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Can be a little bit confusing. Uh, yep. Yeah. So we got a good collection of clovers. Let's do this kind of stuff. Yeah, so it has like a sawtooth pattern to it. Let's see. I'm actually going to be lazy and I'm probably going to mirror this one. Or I move the top, let's just cut in a random amount of them. It seems like most of them happen actually at the top, right? So you have this, this kind of lead up towards the top. And then you got these like sawtooth patterns that are coming in. Let's actually keep it very simple for now. See if that's enough. Something like this, and then we'll just have to smoothen out the entire thing a little bit. What we can actually do is we can probably just steal the modifiers from this one. Oh, it only has a subdivision. Never mind. Then squish it, and then we mirror it again. That one. Right. And we're getting an edge down the middle that we can also use. Push this inner edge down so that we get like that little dip that's happening. And what we can also see is that it looks to me that the points are actually quite sharp, but then the valleys are actually quite rounded off, right? So what we'll do for those is we'll grab all the sharp parts yeah, that this one goes well we'll just bevel that that's more like it Probably got some new people in here popping in and out. Uh, I just want to remind you that it's okay to ask any questions when it when it comes to game development or like working in the industry or uh, anything that you can think of. Feel free to ask away if you got any questions. This one is actually quite rounded off. Uh, what if we do this first, right? Because then we can actually merge the center with it. Shade smooth. It needs to be that the top is also a bit rounder, okay? So... Let's try something like that and then maybe get a little bit more smooth as well.
quite interesting because it has a lot of variation built into it. Like it, it looks like some of them have like a real distinct like sawtooth pattern, but then some of them don't. So we kind of have to replicate that with multiple with uh, multiple variations again. Okay. And we'll probably have one that's a little little sharper like a, a pointier edge again we probably want to push three-dimensionality as much as possible too right so we're getting how are we going to do this like i'm currently thinking I'm currently thinking what the low poly version of this is going to look like, right? What I mean by that is if we're going to bake it all down. Oh, sorry. If we're going to bake it all down to a single plane, like we're probably going to do with these clovers or because this is a little bit bigger. We could actually make it 3D, right? Or we could have the base layer baked down and then have a couple of things coming out of it in like geometry. Uh, we could do that too. Maybe... Let's try full geometry first, and then if the size of it doesn't justify that workflow, we can we can still switch it up. It's not in terms of raw geometry, it's not gonna be that expensive, right? It doesn't need that much. Um yeah, we'll see. happening there and select everything and what are we going to do with this one make it sharper again or blunt let's do something like that and then make This a little sharper too. Go for soft selection. We're probably going to make this one like a little bit more rounded as well. Just because it's the first one. Maybe, maybe we can add some variation in all of them as well. quite sharp and then this one becomes a little bit more rounded again yeah oh i think before we do movements like this actually let's gonna create a backup and then we're just gonna apply the mirror because then if we do stuff like this it looks unique on each side right that's gonna help us give like a more unique look overall start playing around with stuff a little bit more we're gonna do the same thing here honestly Not yet. Not yet. What is everyone else working on today? I think a couple of people are actually working. Right? So it's all covered in NDA stickers, but... I don't know. Let me know if you're a student. What are you working on today? Or if you can talk about the stuff that you're working on. You don't have to be a student. 
<clears throat> There's also a couple more rounded ones in here, right? And what I'm also seeing is that you get this like nice, nice bit of curvature there. Replicate that. Hey, it's Adam. Hey, Adam. How's it going, buddy? Most of it is actually going somewhat down. Just working away. Yeah, doing the same, man. As you can see, I'm going to be making a bit of uh, small ground foliage today. I'm going to see if we can spice up the ground cover a little bit. That was like a fun thing to tackle. Some weird shading going on. I'm not too worried about it, actually. You breakable is drawing whimsical trees just for fun. That's awesome. We actually had a conversation. Uh, actually had a conversation with someone about that and like reconnecting with uh, why you got into art in the first place, right? And for me, for me, that was drawing. Like that's how I got into art in the first place. I was just drawing a lot. Uh, it actually made me made me consider like going back a little bit more towards the the core of it, right? Like like reconnecting with your inner child when it comes to art. But the issue is like I'm always I'm sure I'm not alone in this, but like I have this feeling of like, oh, but if I'm not if I'm not doing 3D, then I'm not making progress on that. So there's like you know, like a, a sort of guilt associated with it, right? It also doesn't help that I have a lot of stuff on my plate. <laughs> or, well, not a lot of stuff on my plate. That sounds like it's forced, right? But, like, I do really enjoy the stuff that I'm doing right now, for example. I'm always like, yeah, it would be cool to do, like, a bit more... Like, drawing and stuff. Just bad at making time at it. <clears throat> so that's going to clean up those weird lines. We'll need to do that in a little bit. Let's first see if we can get majority of these shapes in. I'm going to duplicate this one here, right? Yeah, do you all have the same feeling? That sometimes you just... Just want to reconnect with why you loved art in the beginning? I don't know. It sounds so ethereal now that I say it out loud, but... We can make like a little bit more of a broadleaf situation going on here. Don't need. What's happening? Something more like this. Okay. Make it a little bit slimmer as well. We don't want it to stand out too much compared to the other ones, right? So we'll... One down. Mm 
there another one that we need? Like one that stands out. I like this one. Feels uh feels a little bit more natural than the other ones, right? It has some organic chaos going on. This is a nice selection of leafy boys. We don't need to scale them either because we can do that in the low poly. Now this will just let's say we reserve this quadrant for those guys, right? And then let's say we reserve this quadrant for the clovers. Because I think, what did we land on? I think we got five sixes variations going on. It almost looks like basil. Might be. Um, not too sure about doing this one. I think I think it could be cool when it comes to like the amount of density that it offers, right? So maybe hmm. I'm trying to imagine how it looks in the scene. I think the clovers are gonna be like a little bit bigger than these ones, right? So let's let's do one of the big ones first and then we'll see. Give it some time to give it some time to consider. Oh, before we do that, we need to clean up some of the geo here, though. Just be lazy and do it by distance, please. That would be good. Here we go. Distance. Hi, Aloya! Welcome. Oh. Welcome back to the chat. <laughs> Blender just gave up. Okay, thanks, Blender. Uh, recover last? That is totally not what we were working on. So. I'm not too worried about it. Like, usually, Blender does a really good job at saving it anyway. So yeah, anyway, Aloya, welcome back to the chat. Happy to see you here. How's it going? I'm doing good. We're just making some little bits of weed and little bits of uh, tiny bits of grass, right? Or like, well, not tiny bits of grass, but we're trying to make additional meshes so that we can variate, like, additional, add additional variations to the grass, right? So that it's not just like grass, but it's also little bits of weed, little bits of clovers, like all that kind of stuff in it. Uh, I am going to be really lazy and I'm going to see 34. Yeah, it's close enough. Let's do that. So, yeah, before we're moving on to, to other stuff, I want to clean this stuff up a little. No, not collapse by the... Little cleanup. We 
doing this little bit of cleanup because we're getting some weird normal issue. Well, well, we are definitely getting some weird like lines here, right? Um, but actually, they don't matter that much because what we're probably going to be doing is we'll do like a little bit of a sculpting pass on top of this, right? So what we're what we're doing right now is we're just making the base high poly for all of it. And then what I'll do after is I'll just do like a really quick sculpting pass on top of it to give it some of its uh, nicer detail. And then we can then bake that down onto the plane that we have here. And then we can start making low polys out of it. That's what we're doing. I keep learning, now working on the hand radio. It's interesting to watch how to make various grass. Yeah, like we've um, we've made like a couple bits of grass, right? But they were pretty standard bits of grass. We just need to add some variation into it because we're running into the issue. Well, not an issue, right? But it's just like visually, it's not interesting to look at just like a, a large plane of grass like this. Even though the grass itself has like variation built into it. It's not that interesting to look at, right? We can make it way more interesting. Uh, yep, you're right. These will be alpha masked. So, this square that we have underneath it, like, will basically be our UVs. We're using that as a guide. So we're not making this one. Probably gonna go for like this right something relatively small would be good hey admiral mike power good to see you around buddy how's it going We haven't chatted in a while. How's the how's the new job treating you? Should actually actually properly catch up, you know. Let's have a look. Something like that. And then we'll just extrude the bottom out of this, right? Just going to do something like this. So this is going to go up and then it's going to go down into it, right? Because this goes from like a round surface to... Kind of see it here, right? It goes into like the, the nerve structure. So it has that blend going for it. You joined this chat while you're still in the work meeting. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, do something like this. I think the bottom here, let's make that a little bit more rounded as well. Actually, let's, let's push it just a little bit more down in general. And we're going to squish this in a little bit. Push this out. Yeah, I think something like that. And we're just going to create like a couple of variations again, right? As we do. Feels a bit big though. Well, the clovers are really big as well compared to these things, right? 
we'll we'll need to see about the scaling of it all. Let's actually see if we need to fix up some of the geo here. Because that should ideally go straight, and then this ideally go here. This one's Make it flow a little bit better, right? So that it's easier to work with for us. <clears throat> that and then... This stuff looks really nice as well, but I don't think... Can we can we do that? Can we actually curve it up and bake it down and actually have it look good? Wonder... So it's rotating them both to the same side. Oh wait, what if we do... A little bit tricky. I'll have to squish this as well. up and now we're getting getting a taco style of leaf love it so we're kind of getting that feeling now I think we'll just have to expand this one so that it's actually more funky. The base geometry of this is uh, quite broken at the moment, but it's doing a job, right? That's all we care about. I'm still wondering if we can make this convincing, though. I'm not sure about this one. Something we'll have to test. Because if we if we bake this down, it might look all of it depends on the scale, really. Like it might look pretty good if it's relatively small. But it might also look completely broken. Start baking it down and doing some tests. Not broken, just not good enough. To do some tests. Let's actually readjust this one. Oh, I didn't fix the geo on this one. Right? Hmm. Oh, viewport visibility. Squish it a little bit. Oh, Aloya, I forgot to ask. Uh, now working on the hand radio. Are you following a tutorial? Because, I mean, when I hear like a, a hand radio or like a ham radio or something like that, I think about the 
a tutorial. I think it's from Chamfer Zone, right? Like the the stereotypical one where you go through like a full pipeline, to make a good looking uh, radio. Is that the one, or is it a different one? Hi, Vivek. Welcome to the chat. How's it going? Let's uh, make a, a smaller leaf as well. Chamfer, Chamfer was the AK. Um, I think he made that one as well, but I think he made it. He made a couple of a couple of gun tutorials, right? I'm not sure if he made the the radio section. Mm. 3D modeling radio tutorial. I was expecting this to come up like way quicker. Oh, S Simon Fush. was mistaken so uh where is it let me count there's a link to it yeah this is the one that i was talking about but actually yeah it's a different person simon fush also made uh, made a couple of gun tutorials as well, if I'm not mistaken. Alduin! Hello! How are you doing? Simon's military radio is such a solid course in my opinion. I would assume so. Like I know I know he's a good artist, right? But I've never taken any of the courses or like any any of the tutorials myself, so don't know about that one. But I'm sure it is. Like all the people that I know that followed it, like made like a really good looking, good looking piece, right? So it's it's definitely showing the consistency between it, for sure. For sure. in here I think it's a little bit more push it up a little bit more and then again we'll have to think about like a 3d aspect right we're gonna Push it up a little bit more, make it a little bit distorted as well. Get some nice 3D shapes. <clears throat> so that. Alwyn, what's on the menu today? Foliage work? Yeah, I'm making I'm making some small weeds and stuff so that we can scatter them in between the grass to get some more variation. That's what I'm working on today. So we're just making some generic weeds and like clovers and like some smaller plants that we can scatter in between. Uh, Vivek, I'm working on a wooden plank material in Designer. Any suggestion on rendering this material? What do you mean with rendering? Like presentation? Uh, because a quick a quick tip that I could give you is look into... Uh, I think it's called the Render PBR node. Like that's inside of uh, Substance Designer. It actually is a great tool to present your uh, your stuff. Your stuff that you made in Designer. You have to plug in like your whole material, so 
yeah, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit tricky to use in the beginning, but it actually does a, like a really good job of just presenting it. No worries. That look good? No, that doesn't look because that messes up with the silhouette of it. Other one, you went through it a couple of months ago. I wanted an overview of the high poly to low poly workflow. It's quite elaborate. Oh, that's awesome. It's good to hear. There's people, there's there's a lot of people putting out amazing, amazing tutorials out there. Good to have people doing that. Especially because a lot of it didn't exist, you know? Like, I don't know, let's say... Let's say when I was trying it, right? Like, the only, the main resource we had was uh, Polycount. Which was really good. But, like, the majority of stuff on YouTube was, I don't know, just not good. Now there's so, many, so much good stuff out there. Quite nuts. Curvy one. Just see if we can rotate that. We have like a couple of curvy ones, right? What else do we need? Maybe let's make another small one that kind of a little bit more curled up or something. like that and squish it to the side as well you're not gonna see most of this right because it's we're just gonna be baking it down to like the the flat plane but it still has a, a nice silhouette to it <clears throat> yeah, and, and again, I just want to repeat this like a couple of times during the stream. If you got any questions, feel free to shout them out in the chat. Uh, like the, the question that Vivek had was a good one. Love to help in any way I can. Um feel feel like we don't need that like we don't need like additional ones right so we'll we'll see what we can do when it comes to like kind of mashing them together you don't want to rotate them either because then i can just cut this out and then move the plane and then cut this out like i just i don't have to rotate or anything like that always helpful if you got them in the same direction Tricky thing here is, I kind of do want to sort of fill up the space a little bit better, right? What if we make one more variation and then we should be good? I think let's do another kind of clean one. More rotated. If we go down instead, actually haven't done that yet. Silly as that sounds, and maybe rotate it a little bit. Yeah, something like that could be good. And we can 
kind of squish that in. Do we scale it? Don't want to scale it too much either. Yeah, I know this is wasting like a little bit of space, but we'll we'll see what we come up with in the next one. Yeah. So now, which one do we want to make? We want to do like small clumped ones? Small ferny boys? We kind of got ferns already. Let's see if we can find something. Gonna do like a very generic search just for ground foliage. Let's see if we can find anything. But the thing is, it kind of needs to be relevant to a an oak forest, right? We kind of want to keep it in theme, so it can't be something that's very very exotic looking. Oh, maybe do we want to do do we want to do a flower or something like that? Hey, Danny. How are you doing? Good to see you here. Oh yeah, that is totally not what we're looking for. Uh, Eo Punky, do you have videos explaining fundamentals to learn environment art? Seems to be not that many videos of those around. So, that is a good question. We don't. Um, but I am planning to do it like throughout the year. Uh, I do have a couple of videos that are kind of in the works that I'm kind of planning on doing myself. That is more like course kind of thing. But I'm going to be honest, it's kind of on the back burner right now because I'm doing like a bunch of other stuff first. So we'll, there's just no promises of when, when it's going to come out. So long story short, we don't. <laughs> That's a good idea, though. I think I think that could definitely be more helpful. Just really go into the foundational stuff. Because you are right. That's somewhat missing. So... I'm trying to think, right? Like, what do we... Oak Forest... Flowers there, but oak. Okay, cool. I love this kind of stuff, though. Do we'll see if we can make something like that. Oh yeah, super useful. I don't know about the flowers though. Like the the main reason why I don't necessarily want to do flowers is because they're so striking. I mean, technically you don't see them that often if you go walking in a forest either. Well, it's very very season season bound, right? Beautiful oak tree wall. A lot of clovers, a lot of ferns. Moss growing in it as well. We can do that. We have moss lying around. It would be kind of nice to, to kind of have some moss clumps in there as well. You should look for the city's forest. Yeah, let's do that. That's a good show.
Oh. Leaves, brown foliage. It's quite cool. Like it's very subtle, right? Be could be an interesting one. I'm probably probably gonna split it up in this or because I'm, I'm currently thinking like it would be it would be cool if we can have like an atlas full of flowers right and then if you want to add flowers like you're pulling in like a different texture set instead of always having to pull in flowers that I, the stuff that we're doing now is the base that you're all, always going to be using and then you have the option to add flowers on top of it i think that makes sense. Yep. I am from Belgium. How'd you guess? Is it that? Is that obvious? Oh no. That kind of stuff is quite cool. It's hard to see though. Okay. I'm gonna... Um... Actually, we've got quite a, quite a couple of good ones here. They're quite a nice. As well, that's from textures.com. Oh god, here. Yeah. Give us that much. Yeah, just some generic stuff, right? Like, it doesn't even look like it's... meant to be anything it's just like fairly generic stuff screwing on the floor i think you can get away with like a lot of it honestly um so let's actually see what we can do with it so i'm gonna pick this one i pick this one as well that's that's stuff that we already kind of have anyway There's some bushes. Already caught God Ivy and all that stuff, so we don't necessarily need that. Have another look. Let's just do that. Let's get that in. And we got like a couple of random variations that we can add in like the last quadrant, right? Hi, George! How's it going, buddy? Uh, Timothy Dries are like two very Flemish names. Yeah, that's true. Especially the Dries part. I think Timothy is quite like... Uh, quite generic, right? You see that in a lot more countries. But I think Dries... That does have like a very, very Belgian connotation to it. Working hard as usual, I see. Yeah, just having fun as well. Making some weeds and some additional ground foliage. Let's have a look here. So, very low res, but we'll make it work. So it's basically this kind of stuff, but then just like a little, little longer and like a little sharper as well. Like these ones, let's see if we can. So how do they do? So it's like 
full circle with like a gap at the end. Okay. Start out with like a cylinder. And let's join this up here. Little Beverly boy. Just cut that out. Then we can triangulate this up. Let's see, what can we actually do here? So if I check or deselect, what do I get? It's not, it's not really doing what I want. So check or deselect. Oh, there we go. That's exactly what we're making. We're just making some random stuff that grows in the forest just like weeds and like smaller ground foliage this is also offset and we'll do it's not Duplicate this. Oh, Danny, you did foliage for a month. Definitely not for me. I I do enjoy it, but yeah. Not as, like, a full-time thing, you know? That's a bit too much. Yep, we're going to do, like, a quick sculpt pass on top of these to add some more variation. That's going to look quite nice. We'll make it a little bit uneven. One bigger as well. Um, on connect that. Makes sense. What if we do this? You whoop. And if we, oh, don't want to do that. A bit at the end is quite screwed. Oh, okay. Thanks, Blender. I think it's because I have all my foliage in one file. And it has like the, the script in it as well. That is basically constantly throwing up errors. Are you working on anything, George and Mazeltov? Are you anything doing anything at the moment? When is that? Twenty. It might. It might also be. 
It might also be because I downloaded new drivers. Um, because I was quite interested that people mentioned that there is a difference between... Um, there's, there's basically two versions of NVIDIA drivers that you can download. Studio drivers and like the normal gaming drivers. And I'm currently testing the studio drivers for the first time. So might also be that. I feel like that's a stretch, but... Could be, you know? Let's do all of this again. Oh, you got COVID at a moment. Sorry to hear that. I hope you get over it fairly quick, though. See, we'll add these circles back in. It's down again. Some generic stuff going on. Uh, yeah, we had it for the first time last week as well. It was uh I hope I hope you're not doing too bad. Cuz uh well, you're here, so I'm assuming not. Like the the first two days were pretty rough, but then after it it was actually yeah, okay-ish. You know, it just turned it turned into like a, a very common cold very quickly, I feel. At least for us it did. So quite happy about that. Uh let's see. Can we salvage this into something? Yeah, very tired, yeah. We did a lot of sleeping like the first two days as well. We're just constantly just, yeah, like you said, tired. Make sure to rest well. Have a bunch of sleep. Not really yet. Because they lean more forward. bit more like it and then probably got like another section here as well and we'll probably move this up a little bit yeah something like that <clears throat> Gotta run, Adam. Thanks for popping in, man. And uh, yeah, you have a nice weekend too, buddy. Let's see this one. that up a little bit like a couple of variations of this one as well kind of looks like it's like a little bit more defined than I have it currently
in a way where it has more of a shape to it. That's not looking too great. Actually, also, like, more round than I made. Let's see what we can do about that. Oh, it feels like a cold, but no taste and no smell. Oh, that sucks. I'm glad that I didn't have any of that. I hope he gets back soon, though. My girlfriend had that for a little bit. And, uh... It was gone after a few days, I think. Like, uh, two to three days. Something like that. So hopefully it doesn't take too long. Probably gonna do if we fall. Okay, I did the wrong one. Not only this one is wrong. Okay. Get rid of that one. Just make it a little bit rounder. Let's go. That's looking bad. Two is full. see probably gonna something like this right so that we have like a nice curve to it it's looking pretty good I found an old blender file where I made a lot of modular pieces, but their dimensions 3 by 4 and I don't know how I can use them with tileable textures. Any advice? Um, it depends on the kit. Right? Um, because you're probably struggling with making the 3 meter piece work with the tileable texture, because... Uh, yeah, if you have, it, it also depends on the pixel density, right? Like if you have uh, a tileable texture that is tiling on one meter, right? So let's say you have uh, a pixel density of 1K by one meter and your tileable texture is 1K. That means that the tiling actually correlates to the meter pieces, right? So... Yeah, you kind of, you kind of, if you want to get it to line up, like, accurately, you kind of want to, want to keep that in mind a little bit. Obviously, there's some stuff that you can do with, like, a little bit of scaling, a little bit of tweaking. I, I kind of faff around with that in my, uh, scene as well. Uh, where 
we have these wall pieces, for example, and they are built out of like the like a couple of sections. Uh, let's see. So put on the grid, and then we say like put that there, put that there, put that there. Like they tile. But what I actually did is I I squished some of the UVs on some of these pieces, right? But you can, you can, uh, yeah, you can, you can kind of get away with like a little bit of squishing, especially if you then start introducing like vertex painting, right? Kind of get rid of that. But yeah, my advice would be just to make your, uh, texture match as, as much as possible to the modular set. Because the, the better the foundation is, like the better the whole thing will just match up. You could get away with some UV butterfly flipping, but you'll end up utilizing a meter of your textures. Not utilizing a meter of your textures if you don't want to remake the textures. Yeah, that's a good point as well. Um, Yeah, that's a good point. I think... I think the only awkward thing that, that you'll have there is that you'll see the seam where it's symmetry, right? Because symmetry, well, especially on something like, like for example, my stuff here. If I were to symmetry a certain section, like, that's always, like, super noticeable. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, the flip can on, uh, the, the flip can look odd depending on the texture, for sure. For sure. So you got to be careful with that as well. It is a good trick, though. Is definitely a good trick. Back again. Welcome back. Which paint? Uh, what are we gonna do next? So, where were we? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, it's spawning actual rock meshes. Because, oh my god, the virtual height fields that you can add, like, they're such a mess. Like, it's so unstable. Um, I'm also using... I'm also using uh, virtual textures to sample the textures from my terrain, right? But they're also really messy. I think I think you can see it. Like when I go to like a spline that I've added onto it. You know, on these ones. Maybe it's fine now. There's that's the that's the whole issue with that whole system, is that sometimes they work and then sometimes they're half broken and sometimes they just don't work at all. Um It's Yeah. I That's one thing that I need to find a solution for. Maybe go with like old school word projection with using vertex paint or something like that, right? Uh, that might work instead of doing it all in the material. But I mean, yeah. I've basically been ignoring it un up until this point. I'll need to fix it later. Yeah. Uh, the mud is created in Substance Designer. So, just good old substance. How did you unwrap the pillar and the stone arch, also tidable? So, that is using a tidable that I then displace. So, I did that in Blender. So, what is what is a good example piece, right? We have this, this section over here. Where it's using the same tidable as the wall. But what I'm doing is I'm just doing like a displacement modifier in Blender so that I can actually get geometry out of it. And this helps blend or like sell the illusion that the walls are just parallax occlusion mapping. Like there's no geo on these, they're just flat, right? But like those two in conjunction, they kind of sell the idea that there's like a lot of geometry here as well. Because you see like geometry here on the edges. 
Yeah. Hey Antonio, how's it going? Thanks for removing displacement epic. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, there's, I guess, other ways around it, but I'm currently limited because I don't want to necessarily use nanite, right? So, like, another way that you could do it is that you could, um, to even blend it, right? Like, you would do like a vertex paint blend that's pretty manual, and then use displacement inside of Unreal to then add actual deformation based on the two height maps that you put in or something like that, right? Uh, and then you get some little blending. But that also means that you have to be very specific with the way that you use these meshes too, right? So I think, I think that works perfectly for like static piles of something. But if you want to do like landscapes, blinds or anything like that, you need something that's more flexible. So, oh god. Yeah. So, are virtual textures used in production to blend surfaces together? Yeah, it depends on the production, like Admiral Macbar is saying. Uh, or should I aim for some vertex blending instead of my portfolio pieces? <laughs> Honestly, just use the thing that's more comfortable and what works the best for you. Uh... Because even though a production uses one or the other, like it's super simple if they have the system already set up in place, right? So that's not that's not a big difference when it comes to it. It's a, it's almost like it's even more detailed than you using Blender and then the company is using 3ds Max, right? Like that's it's a relatively small step that that needs to be overcome. Even smaller if you're talking about virtual textures or vertex blending. Just, yeah, just use whatever that works, honestly. <laughs> if you just heard my rant about, like, virtual textures, maybe it might be better to, to avoid it. <laughs> um, let's have a look here. Did it be a question? Oh, yeah, how did I create the mud? Yeah, that's just substance. Yeah. That's the thing, right? Like, it's, it's more... I'm trying to implement as many industry standard techniques in my portfolio. Although, I may be overthinking it a bit. Thanks, Tim and Admiral. Um, yeah, but industry standard, I think, doesn't go... Doesn't go that far when it comes to niche applications, right? Um, because... What is what is probably industry standard is PBR rendering, right? That's that's a thing that we can call uh, industry standard. Um, but apart from that, I don't think there is like a, a thorough industry standard that you can follow, right? Well, high to low poly workflow is is very standard as well right even though like there's new workflows out there like the the things that you learn when doing a high to low poly workflow can be uh split apart and be used in different things right so for example baking to a flat plane if you've never done a high to low poly you don't really know what baking is yet so this is also not going to make more sense so i would say high to low poly workflow is it's going to give you, like, all the tools you need to make, like, most of the other stuff as well. With with some different applications to certain parts as well, right? Uh, but yeah, like, honestly, like, industry standard is probably PBR and, like, high to low poly. That's, that's kind of it. Like, I can't... Feel free, feel free to throw ideas in the chat, right? Because those are the, the two ones that I can think of that are, like really industry standard i feel like at least set you up with like the tools that you need <clears throat> oh admiral saying that's a trap that, I, that you fell into when you were learning just overthought it like mad yeah exactly um Industry standard is a very broad term, techniques and, and stuff changes depending on the project. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like in... I've used 
well, not all of the 3D programs, right? But all the common ones, like Max, Maya, and Blender, I've used them all for like multiple years because, yeah, a studio required that of me, right? So yeah, you just need to be prepared to like switch and like be open to learn and that's it. I think that's honestly the best advice, right? Just be open to learn. Uh, how would the overhanging leave bake? I want it bake weird onto a plane. Uh, which one? This one? I'm, I'm actually, I actually don't care. Like, I'm not, I'm not really concerned about like the, the bottom part of it, right? I'm more concerned about like just the shape and the silhouette of it. Or the most left. Oh, on this one? Yeah, you could... On this one, we're probably going to get some depth, right? And there's going to be, like, some faking that we can do with it. But we'll see. Like, if it doesn't work out, then we'll, we'll switch. <clears throat> uh, let's have a look here. So... Oh, if you come up with any tiny questions, Elderwin, feel free to ask. Like, I know that this industry can be confusing as hell, so I don't mind answering any questions. Like, that's why I'm here, right? Like, it's it's supposed to be art, but the art is more like a backdrop to, to like, answer questions as well. <laughs> the pursuit of the mythical standard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, for hiring portfolio, showing you've thought about what technique you've used and why is is quite a big plus. So being able to show a bit of knowledge on what may be used in a project is good. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I'll, I'll give like an example, right? Like if you... If you're applying to work on Star Citizen... And that's uh, the workflow that they use is a mid poly workflow, right? But if you approach their way of building spaceships and you make everything like unique, uh, first of all, it's pretty crazy. But they're also gonna look at uh, at the workflow that you use, and that you're not really sure about the consequences of that workflow, if that makes sense, or like the applications of it, right? where they use that workflow in a specific way uh, because it allows them to be like more flexible and versatile when they have to do changes. And also it makes it quite easy or like quite uh, performant when they have to pull in textures because all the ships from the same manufacturer, this is making assumptions, right? They probably use the same sort of texture sets. So they know whenever there's like a bunch of ships together, they, they have like an amount of texture sets that they can load in and not everything is unique, right? Because that would also just be crazy in the amount of textures that you would need in the first place. But that being said, it's quite hard to figure this stuff out when you don't have industry experience, right? Because from the outside, if you're self-thought and you're just beginning your journey to become an environment artist, like all this stuff kind of looks the same, right? Um, and I'm going to be honest, if if I, if I didn't do like an education about this, or let's say I'm just starting out, like I also didn't, wouldn't know where to look. So again, Every, anything that you can think of, feel free to ask it in the chat and we'll talk about it. No matter how small or insignificant you think it might be, it might actually be uh, a very good topic to talk about. Uh, what are we doing here? What more do we need? That's the question, right? Some random, random weeds here. Let's, let's just create some variations, right? Kind of just want to try and get like a bacon and then like start unwrapping and get some of the test, test stuff already in.
I really love a series of short videos covering at a really high level certain techniques you're using just to give a starting point of like oh uh yeah you mean like making small bits of foliage where you go through the steps of like baking it down onto a plane and all that kind of stuff and then doing the same thing for like a prop right so like let's see i use this technique here doing this and why i'll give folks somewhere to start looking into why oh okay Also like da da da. Let's see what is a what is a variation that we can make here? Just put some stuff aside, shall we? What about just it's a variation, right? So that we have and i'm also gonna vary this up in like the texture itself so that we get some additional variation on top of it Again, trying to think 3d as well <clears throat> sorry i type in broken sentences that's all good <laughs> especially stuff like the socket stuff you were talking about yesterday yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that is actually a good point. I am sort of collecting like what people are interested in when I do these kind of streams. And then I plan on either like compiling that into like a weekly tip or making like a short video about that. For example, uh, I still need to bring out a video for the, the vertex color stuff. It's basically done, right? Um, I just need to release it. So I think it could be good just to do like a quick overview of like quick little things like that. That's a great idea. Great idea. You break it down per area of your environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, that's the thing, right? Like, I have a massive test bed for all that stuff anyway, so might as well use it. <laughs> Alduin just acting like, uh, like a summary for all your crazy rambles. Uh, let's actually, so we got clothes, we got like a bunch of this stuff. Let's actually make some of this smaller stuff then, right? Since we got, got some place for it anyway. <laughs> a specific interpreter for you. Just, just be lazy. Check data on. Uh, it's a bit more round though. Yeah, it's all right, games, music. They have like a creator save like stream list. A bunch of really good stuff in there. I basically, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm trying to pick up like a whole bunch of like uh, medieval themed stuff just to keep me in the mood. They do some awesome music. I love it. Yeah, that's actually that's actually a, a good idea. Roll. Um, yeah, if you got any like topic suggestions, or if if maybe you're watching the stream and you're like, "Oh, this would be awesome," just let me know, right? Because I think that's sometimes where the difficulty lies is in knowing 
what would be what would be interesting to look at you can listen to it on spotify It's actually called like uh, Riot Games Creator Save Playlist. Like they probably have it on like their, their main page. Um, the Quixel Medieval environment videos on YouTube were relatively good. Exposing techniques, but if anything, they were too high level. Oh, interesting, because I actually thought that was like a very interesting series where they picked like a couple of things and then did like a relative deep dive into it, right? At least, yeah. I see what you mean. Right, for example, when they went over like the whole modeling tool set inside of Unreal Engine, maybe that would have been nicer if you if they showed like the actual thing a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Some, yeah, see what you mean. We do need to get like the the nerve structure in here, or like the, uh, all the veins again, right? You know, we just removed them. Uh, let's actually do this as well. It's a little bit easier to edit. Set down again. I am not using speed tree, so for a lot of this stuff, I just do it with particle effects inside of Blender. <laughs> and oh yeah, so this is this is my um, how do I even how do I even say it? Like this is my uh, this call just broke ass, right? Like, I'm so skimpy when it comes to spending money that I rather spend, like, making... Uh, <laughs> that I'm rather spend making, like, a tool that can make trees for me with, like, geometry nodes rather than... rather than doing it all uh, in speed tree, right? Because I'm so skimpy with my money. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll actually show like as like a quick example on how I do that kind of stuff right it's not industry standard I know like basically this entire project is not industry standard I think um but let's have a look here right so Valeria I think the, those are collapsed already This, this scene is a little bit of a mess. So this is an example of how I do stuff. This is also an example. So what I do is I just use like particle systems uh, with like a little bit of cleanup. So I'm literally just using, I'm using hair particle systems. And then I can just say like, hey, look, I want more rocks or less rocks, right? And it's basically just like a randomized scatter sampling from a collection of specific assets that I'm that I'm using so I think uh, scatter assets so I'm basically using this as a collection okay, so if I go into here oh I think I all I'm, I combined them all it's not this one uh, let's actually see. Rock slow poly, that's what I'm using. Oh, and they're in here, yeah. Yeah, this is a collection that I'm using and then it just scatters it for me on this thing. Oh no, these are these are my own rocks. 
I mean, you can tell, George. Come on. <laughs> you don't look that good. Bloody Blender having cool features and shit. What a pest. I honestly think that you can do this in Maya and Max as well. I honestly do. Like, because they have particle systems as well, right? So you must be able to... To, like, use this. Or... I think Maya... It's been so long, so I might not even know what I'm talking about anymore. But I think a lot of those features in Maya are under the MASH. Yeah, 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 exactly. Alduin is backing me up here. Yeah, I think I don't know how it works, right? I have no idea how it works. But I assume that in that tool set, it, there, must be, there must be some tools like that as well, for sure. Yeah, I, I basically use that for like all the scattering, right? Let's see. So we've got rocks, Confalaria, let's have a look. Oh, I think I collapsed these already. Do the same thing for like these wooden splinters. Uh, yeah, the grass is a good example, right? I can do the same thing on the grass. Like I can just like increase or decrease it. And then I have like a bunch of seeds that I can play with. And there's a cool thing where you can where you can kind of link your vertex uh your vertex colors to influence the density and the the size of the objects that you're scattering. So let's see. So I'm currently controlling the length by like a vertex group. Which is literally just a, a circular gradient going from the outside to the inside. Let's show it. I think it's in way painting. Yeah. It's like the red is gonna be is gonna be more well lengthier than the outside, right? So I can just like I can go in and like paint stuff if I wanted to as well. But it's literally just like a circular gradient. Like I said, just do like a radial gradient, and then I just do this, where I think, where I think it's nice, right? Super simple. What would be the try count target for your grass clump? Uh, that's a that's a good question. What are they currently? So in terms of tries, like two point seven. But, but. There's like a whole bunch of optimization because we got this sort of junk, right? Which is actually way too small to actually contribute anything. Um, so we can definitely like optimize this more as well. And then also technically what you want to do is the smaller that stuff gets, like the less geometry it needs, right? So yeah, there's definitely some optimization that can be done here. But that would be like a rough estimation. And then some of the larger ones, they go up to like 8k. Again, can definitely be optimized. I think that's the whole thing with this whole grass system now. Right, there's... Um, there's groups that are so small that, ha that they have no reason to be rendered at all. But it, it's still taken into account. Like this group, for example. So small, you don't even need it. Right, so I, I still need to call some of that stuff out as well. Yeah, that's just a quick overview of how I usually like scatter stuff, right? And again, this depends on just my grass particles, uh, which are over here. So if I add more grass meshes into this collection system, like all the particle systems update as well, accordingly, which is also super handy. But I could basically say like, oh, I don't need this one and I could just remove it. And then it updates like all the particle effects too. Super handy. With a lot of control, right? Because that's what you want with like the vertex paint. And then you can play around with the shapes as well. Like that's what I did with the rocks. Like, this is not like a normal circular shape, right? It gives me more, more control. Hey, Admiral, thanks for popping in, man. And thanks for, uh, for, sh for chiming in as well. Appreciate it. And have fun. 
Hey Jeremiah! It's going good, buddy. Making some weeds over here and like some smaller some smaller scatter stuff. Just for some ground foliage. Sometimes manual works as well. Right? Could have probably grouped this before I did this, but I, here we are. Yeah, I should actually do like an explanation video about that too. Like how to use particle effects because I did a weekly tip about it. But it would be nice to have it in video format as well. Quite cool. Some more. It's blending stuff here too. Yeah, I think I just need to get my ass into gear when it comes to, like, creating videos. I think... I've been doing so many weekly tips that we have such an enormous database of knowledge that would be, like, freaking amazing to just turn that into videos. Need to find time? Like, make time, right? We Should we just try this? I just want to... And it gets stuff in at this point and see how it looks. And then we can still tweak it, right? Well, let's do that. Yep. Yep, Alduin. 100% right. I I love to use that as well. Like whenever, whenever I... Whenever I'm making like random stacks of something, right? Like for example, I was making wood piles. Like I make the wood pile just like very repetitive. And then I'll just do like a randomized transform with like some random rotations and random scales. And it looks so good. Also so easy. So easy. Uh, okay. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to export this. What is an SDL? Instead. Um let's take selected items, don't forget that, because that always fucks me up. Um so weeds low poly. There we go. Like that, and then we can do tie poly longer. It's fine. Let's open the substance, and then let's wait for everything to crash because I'm gonna gonna uh, bake something. Ah. Uh. It is quite funny. I'm using like an older version of Substance Painter and it complains about my GPU driver being out of date. But when you actually look at the numbers, like the the actual number that they say you need to update to is actually lower than the graphics drive that I'm using currently. I think. Yeah, so the currently installed version is 31. And they're complaining about, like, the minimum recommended version is 26. <laughs> I love it. Always the same error. Exactly. Well, it's also, like, never felt the need to upgrade, you know? 
Uh, let's see, oh my god, it's been such a long time. Um, hey, BLTZ, thank you so much for the sub. Uh, where did we save this? Let me just be easy, right? Copy that. Uh, Opoly, yes. Go. Fake. Epoly. Do 512 first. Max frontal distance, here we go. Yeah, same. Don't really feel like I'm missing out. Yeah, exactly. Like, the the main thing that would actually be cool is the new feature where you can see the cage. But it's such a small update. Well, from, like, a usability standpoint, right? Like, it's such a small update for the stuff that I do that is not worth me, like, updating. Uh, Jeremiah, I might have missed it, but can I check again? one of the past streams to see how you go about building foliage meshes because the only way I know how to is with speed tree. Uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna go through it like in a little bit, you know? Very manual. So we got this. I'm gonna slap on like a green color. I'm not gonna do like any texturing anyway. So let's just slap on like a generic green color. All it good for now. Hey. Sure. So, weeds. Collections one. Just call it that. Yeah, we got the high polys baked onto the low polys. Uh, yeah, save this. We don't need that for now. And I'll just duplicate my low poly here. Make sure that we're looking at textured. Now we're just gonna get textures in. You usually bake in Painter, Tim? Yep. I don't have marble set. So I bake everything in Painter or I bake in Substance Designer as well, sometimes. Depending on what I need. So let's just duplicate one of these, right? So M weeds zero one. Let's make it MI for material instance. This is just so that once we set up a material in Unreal Engine, that it automatically links to it. Then just gonna. Oh, I. Didn't even export the textures. That's great. Did you sculpt the foliage or just model it in? Yeah, I just modeled it in. But um, I am planning on sculpting it though. What I want to do now is I just want to get it into the engine so that I can tweak the scales of everything. Um, and just kind of test it, right? Testing it is always important. Oh! You know what will be handy? Setting up an opacity map, don't you think? Uh, that, the quickest way. Dilation. Um, just be very lazy. So. Mesh, frontal distance. We're not going to ignore the back face. That's probably the issue over there. Oh. It's not. It's actually the, the rear distance. Let's bump that up as well. Let's see. Oh, those are the different maps. Because I'm only baking normals for now. So let's do that again. Let's do it for all of them. Give us some random dilation. Whatever. Everything. 
that works now. Then I'm gonna bake it again. Actually, just gonna do normals without dilation. Oh. And, uh, it must have been such a long time ago since I used this, so. Just add opacity in here. So start. Then we go into opacity. We just. Oh, that's the color. Well, like a base opacity that's just going to be black. Oop. Yep. And then we'll add another fill on top of that. So T. White. And then we're gonna. What was it again? Black mask. I'm trying to think what we need to do here, right? So, because I want to use my normal map that has no dilation and just fill it up with a white color. So, we're gonna add a fill. I'm gonna do normal. Normal. It's a world space one. There we go. That's the one. And then. Trying to think how we do this again. Like a filter or something, I think. Color. We do it this way. I guess we could try the old school way, just one of the ones. Yeah, just push that. Like the edges are gonna look completely crunched up, but that's also because we're just baking on like a 512, right? So we got our opacity now. Very simple opacity stuff going on. Then let's expand. AO. that one do? Act, base color, and the opacity is in the alpha. Okay, I guess we can make that work. Just depends on how I set it up, right? I even check the export location. <clears throat> Get it? Makes sense. Hey, Antonio, welcome back. Hey, shitty podcast. How are you doing? For making some small foliage and weeds to spice up the look of our ground foliage. Oh, it's not showing because I don't have the right, right shader connected, but that's all right. Uh, so now we should be able to pull in... Question mark. Shirts. File type. A TGA. Let's 
Intensity. Oh, but the opacity has been pulled from uh, the base color here, right? Yeah, 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 cool. Oh, nice. Would you use the same workflow to make Ivy as well? Uh, yeah, because that's how I made Ivy before. I think we actually have some in the scene here. Maybe. Yeah, so we've got like a bunch of ivy with like a title ball to like attach it to the floor as well, or like to, to the wall. Yeah, same sort of workflow. Uh, the textures look completely screwed up though, so this is not how they're normally meant to look, but... <laughs> yep, I would use the same workflow for uh, for the foliage, uh, for the ivy as well. So now we can just start cutting it up. So it's all manual work or you place them along the branches differently? So we're gonna get into that. I'm actually gonna... Uh, well, do we need it for it? Well, we can give like a quick demonstration, right? It's basically what I showed before you came in, I think. Hey, Guillaume! How's it going? Selection. And then if we set correct face attribute, we can just move it without adjusting UVs. And right now, you got to keep in mind that we're still working with just S textures, right? Like this was just very quickly put in. We actually don't care that much about how this is going to look. Or like how the textures currently look. We're gonna do a little bit of sculpting, but that hopefully shouldn't change the dimensions that much. And uh, let's make sure that we set origins to the middle. All right, so this is, let's do a proper naming convention as well. Over single one, single two, Four, and then we'll put that in um, new collection. I was actually fixing up like the names of these so ground foliage clover then we'll put that in another collection because this is this is a collection that we're going to be using when it comes to our uh particle system because that's what we're going to be using to drive like to, to scatter all this stuff so Let's have a look here. I'm just gonna duplicate this one and move that into the uncover clover stuff. So what we're using here, like I was saying before, is we're using the a particle emitter set to hair, and just with like a random rotation, uh, with like a bunch of random stuff on it. I've also done like a weight paint so I can control how lengthy the grass is going to be according to the weight that is assigned to the vertices as well. Because this is just like a simple, a simple plane, right? Like there's nothing too fancy about this. So if we now 
uh, go to render, I think, and then we set it to Clover Honk. Uh, the rotation is completely screwed up. So there's a couple of ways to fix this. Sometimes the rotation is kind of wonky in here because it has so many parameters that I sometimes just honestly just get confused by how this works. Um, because this is, yeah, that's all velocity, right? So rotation, we have like a whole bunch of stuff that we can control here. Not randomize it. Let's see if we can fix it in here, right? Let's also just move it up a little bit. And see, but that's that's the issue, right? So I want to randomize it, but now it randomizes along the the wrong rotation. And to fix that, like it's kind of tricky sometimes, you know. Wait, let's actually see. See, because we can add like a bit of like randomization this way, but. That kind of works. Uh, and I think it's been a while since I used it, so let's see if we can change the actual scale here. Here we go. Like a scale randomization, and then we can also just like add way more if we wanted to, right? I'm actually gonna do a quick adjustment here. I'm just gonna do like. Uh, oak and just roughly move that into like the middle of the asset or well, the stem location right and we're just going to give it like a little bit more than just being flat we have to adjust the oh, don't have that selected Yeah, see how it live updates. I love that. And we can set like a randomized seed as well if we wanted to. It's a lot of control, you know. Then on top of that, we can also we can also do it with like a vertex, vertex paint or like weight paint in this case, right? Um, where I can say like, hey, look. Uh, oh wait, doing a gradient. I want more here, you know, I can make like kind of clumps. If I set it to zero, I can kind of, oh no, wait, strength. Kind of like brush stuff away if I wanted to as well. Yeah, so very, very handy system. You just want to make like plumps, right? With like a lot of control. Very handy. And then we can just like... Oh, the one thing that I forgot to do is because the particle systems are linked to each other, I've now also changed this for uh, the, the grass as well. So, what about that? So the grass will... One of the things the grass will have... Which one did we duplicate? Oh, we didn't even duplicate it. We? Oh, we just moved it. Okay. Silly. Yeah, let's duplicate it and then make sure that we're not doing this, right? So clover. Adder. Can I actually link... fires yeah oh yeah I want to unlink it again and then we can increase it and then we're good again nice 
So you use the flat circle to create blobs, but then you don't import the plane into Unreal Engine. Yep, exactly. So if we then if we then want to do something like this, right? We'll uh, I think we'll have to make the instances real here. And then I think we'll have to do one more step where we make them because now they're still linked as instances. So I think what we'll need to do first is we'll have to clear all the relations. And then we should be able to join them together and then we have like a, a clump. Clump that we can just use. Just a single mesh. So yeah, and then I can kind of I can kind of do like a quick little thing after the fact where I can say like okay, uh, select random, right? Set that to like a very low value. Let's do it actually as a face selection. Select random, and then select length, and just delete all of it, and that gives me like a little bit more randomization. Yeah, now this would go, uh, so, clovers, uh, one, zero one. That would go straight in the engine like this. Yeah, makes for a, like a very flexible system where if we... We just scale it down a little bit more and then just change like the number of stuff well or for stuff here right variation is crazy on this one though and then the cool thing is, is as well is that we can also Uh, we can still move the geometry, right? We could kind of make it into like a very kind of organic shape. And it will also just still scatter on that shape as well. We have like a lot of control when it comes to this. Make it look like a bit more organic than just like a straight round stuff. Yeah, super versatile, super handy to do this kind of stuff. Um, Let's see. We can get this in and get like our textures set up as well. Um, is this all still set up to go to like the right location? Biome, temperate. And then we want uh, weeds. And then do like I haven't figured out how to do this. I don't know how to do a backward slash. <laughs> Freaking keyboard. Um, so weeds, backward slash, and then what were we gonna name it? Let me make a quick exports. Let's call it that. Exports. That. And then hopefully, I don't actually know if this is gonna work. You then export that. Hey, there it is. So it's in the exports folder now. Biomes. Let's make like a, a new folder here as well. Does Unreal have a separate shading model for translucency? I assume you need a separate master material for foliage on the scene. Yep, they have a dedicated foliage material, like two-sided foliage. Uh, that's usually what I use on like a lot of my stuff. Here. Oh, so we got our random clump. <laughs> and it looks so funky now. Also, the pivot is slightly off center. Let's fix that real quick. Um, 
Textures are good, right? So we just need to import the textures as well. I'm actually wondering if I can just click and drag because that never really worked. Oh, here we go. Nice. Then what we'll do... Oh, it didn't import the material. That's a shame. Because normally it automatically links with that as well. So, uh, materials. Which one do I need? Am I for this, right? Shit, that's not what I want to do. Duplicate. Reads. Slap that on there. It's going to look like a bunch of weird ferns right now. That. That export as an ORM. Yep, it did. We don't have a subsurface yet, though. So I'm not going to change that. Hey, and there we got our very bright looking weeds. Nice. Or like our clovers in this case. Yeah, uh, last thing I want to, well, not the last thing, but like the next thing I want to do. I want to quickly see. So this is all my grass stuff, right? This is what I use for scattering grass, so. So, duplicate. To wheat clovers. Oh, let's make sure that stuff is also assigned to grass density. Actually, don't know. Forty. Pretty arbitrary at the. Yeah. It's gonna look good. We get some variation up in there. Make that like way darker. Bloom. It's a bit better. As like a quick fix. Oh, well, we could do like a very quick fix and just set it in here, which is also a thing that a lot of people overlook, I think. Creation down is. Yeah, a lot of it also comes from like the the speed tree variation note that I added. Yeah, like in this, we'll have to tweak it, right? This is not the final result, but what we got is already looking pretty good. Let's do another one, shall we? For this one, we're actually going to make it like a little bit more 3D, right? Uh, Jeremiah asking a question in the chat. I was wondering if you could get your advice on something. I contacted an art station this morning for if I'm in freelance work, but I need to finish my studies and my portfolio work before I start working. Especially I need to start working in the studio to be ready to do freelance as well. Oh, how would you decline them? Oh, you just say, no, I'm not available at this time, sorry. I mean, that's the gist of it, right? Is you don't have to overthink it. Like, uh, sorry, I'm currently not available. Or 
I I'm currently not looking for freelance work, but I would also say in contact. Right? Something like that. Very simple. Straight to the point. Hey, Giacomo! How's your, how are you doing, buddy? Let's do the same thing for this, right? Duplicate it over. But for this one, we'll actually have to make it into... Uh, plant first, you know? I'm gonna do that real quick. Duplicate this stuff over as well. Turn it into like a little workshop. Yeah, they're not going to be bad. Like for them, it's just like business as usual, right? Like, they, yeah, they send it out to like a bunch of different people and they know that like a lot of them are, are not going to, are not going to agree or something like that, right? So don't overthink it. Like when it comes to that stuff, totally fine. Oh, good, my man. How about you? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Feeling way better than I did last week. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Doing all good now. Let's actually link this together again. Because I I always find it a little bit easier to like adjust stuff on like a flat plane, right? So that we can kind of give it like a curve and a bend on like the flat plane. And then we can see that reflected in in the actual object, right? <clears throat> so let's see where is my reference what i'm actually gonna do is i'm probably gonna angle it a little bit so we're gonna stuff up oh some of it is linked and some of it isn't I think it's a top layer. We don't want to add too much geometry. All right, gonna make a quick run. Make sure to rewatch the stream later. That's awesome, Jeremiah. Thanks for popping in. Thanks for the good questions as well. Appreciate it. I'll speak to you later. Actually cut that off a little bit. That is actually aligning to the stem of it as well, right? Shade that smooth as well. gonna be lazy and kind of just use scale to create some weak variation so do something like that oh I did it again whenever I duplicate I need to make sure that I duplicate linked we go they actually like crisscross just a little bit right also helps us cover up like the the ground a little bit
some additional people here because the top sections look quite rough, you know. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this one though. Is that just triangulation? Yeah. There's some funky triangulation going. <laughs> oh no, we did a bevel with correct face attributes on. Always like slightly screws it up. Oh no, wait. In here. What is happening? Uh, was being smart. But I wasn't. So the visa kind of screwed up. So hoping to avoid that. Gonna be very lazy. Not accurate at all, but hey, who cares? Have you thought about Skyrim music for the stream? It fits the medieval theme. Um, that's a that's an interesting suggestion. I don't know if it's stream safe. You know, if you can just use it for the stream. You need to look into that. Actually, I have no idea. And then what we're going to do next is uh, I'm going to do a randomized transform, right? What I'm going to do is set this to set to scale even. I'm going to do like a randomized rotation as well. Maybe not that much. Alexander Nakarada has a huge collection of royalty free music. Oh, that's awesome. I'll need to check him out. Fantasy medieval theme. That would be perfect. is still screwing us up here. Weird, what's causing that? Yeah, so now we have this little one here. I'm probably just thinking about that. So we need to do the same thing here. So relations make it that and then we just scale it down to like an appropriate size right so everything is freaking huge now be a little bit much let's push some of it down again One of them can be like a little bit higher. And then we can, at this point, like create additional variations, right? Might have been good to keep it back up. Let's see if I can go back. Please. <gasps> no. Yeah, okay. Let's have some fun recreating it then a little bit. Could technically, yeah, 
I could technically detach all of it and like link it again to the main object. So I could do that. Not too big of a deal. going to see first right i'm going to set up like the particle systems i'm going to make some very quick variations here And then we can just do the same thing that we've been doing before, right? So I'll duplicate this thing. Let's open up the particle system again. Uh, let's make sure that we do this. Let's use a, a weeds scatter instead of this one so that now it's not linked to the other one anymore and then we'll just have to assign it to like a different collection right so probably gonna use scatter assets uh weeds zero one we don't really have a name for this one right so it's just pretty generic stuff at this point and then we can use that collection in here. So our weeds. They're all rotated in the same way. Is that happening here as well? Maybe. I didn't even notice that. Oh yeah, that's because we we didn't fix like the, the randomized scale, like the, the rotation. So let's have a look. All right, check X. That's that's looking promising. Oh no. This is the only reason why I hate this system. Like sometimes it's so finicky to figure it out. Like orientation axis, like object Z. But then why does it, why does it rotate like the base of it? Right? It doesn't make sense in my head. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a good shout. I think so. It's just, it's always been weird like that, you know? Like, uh, these ones are fine as well. It's just the way that this thing works. So that all rotates that way. That rotates that way, but that means... Yeah, that's just going to randomize it and everything. I want to be able to randomize this to the max so that we get... Uh, we get like a randomized rotation in there, right? I basically want to rotate it on the Z-axis. But if I... If I then think what makes sense... Is like, okay, I put it to global Z or object Z. But it's like Yeah, it doesn't doesn't work like that, right? Thinking about this in the right way. That's it. And this looks right from the rotation, but it's gonna rotate on the wrong axis then. So this is fine when it comes to the base, but I want it to rotate in like a different ro uh, location, like rotation. 
What we could try is double Z. Uh, then. Oh wait, we need to make sure that we do individual. Right, so we could kind of walk around with like the rotations here. Then maybe, yeah, this works, right? But that's weird because now we've basically misaligned the transformation on like the base mesh, right? What's that doing? Like pointing, pointing Y up. What have we set this to? Pointing Z, yeah, it's weird. This works, I guess, but just weird the way that you have to set it up, right? So let's uh let's replace this. What's happening? Oh okay, yeah. Because of this. Uh so scatter assets and then we're gonna What do we call it again? Scatter assets weeds? And we'll have to do the same thing here as well. Oh, let's sure that we apply the rotation and all that jazz <laughs> and we rotate it this way okay and now that works it looks quite cool when you have it so dense you know to reduce it but Maybe, maybe I want to make even like smaller cards, you know? And what I'll do is I'll... Oh, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to reset the whole thing. Well, I guess... Uh, average, smear, sample. Isn't there a fill? That way. Yeah. That's what I want. Why can't I do that? Okay. Whatever. Let's just do... That radius is not what it's supposed to be. Is that because, like, the scale is just weird on this? Yeah, that's better. Like, uh, here, then we're gonna go here, roughly take the middle. Set that way to... actually don't want like probably want like a, a sharper fall off right oh no more like a isn't this not gonna look well what we could do is do something like this and then potentially out a little bit I feel like that can work A nice clumpy boy. I need to make sure that we're organizing this a little bit as well. Keep it all organized. Yeah, let's just give that a go, right? Let's see. Let's see what we can do with that. Uh, so first of all, we need to fly. Uh, no, make instances real. And we're gonna do relations, clear it all up, 
and then grind it all up. Station on this, and then we should be good. It's gonna be it's gonna be a little dense. I'm thinking maybe it makes more sense to have like an individual clump as well. Okay, so just have this one that we can use that into the scattering too. Put it to a scene collection. Crown foliage, weed. Crown foliage we don't need. So, single. We'll call this one weed one zero one. lazy again. Where do we support this one to? Even work? I have to do it. Yeah, I have to do it like individually. Right. Let's get those suckers in as well. Okay, it's already linked. That's good. And then we'll do the same thing here, right? We'll just infuse it into our grass patch as well. Let's do... Wait, let's do a duplicate. And another duplicate. Oh. Oh, I, I removed the... Uh, I'm puffing about here. I removed the wrong one. Oh no, I'm doing duplicate. What am I doing? Okay. So, duplicate this one. Add the overs first. Set that to 40 because that's what we had. Then duplicate this one. Twice. Sell one off. These two. And then. Weed single. Right? So. Let's have a quick look. Oh, they are really tiny, though. Okay, maybe not that tiny then. <laughs> you done yet? What does it look like? Making some weeds, man. So, will that be enough? Be enough of a scale up. So we clump. Now they're just gone. The scale of this. Oh my god, the <laughs> speed tree like color variation on this is like really strong. Yeah, he is, right? That's the one, that one. 
Uh, Elwin, would you say making portfolio environments as playable levels is worth the extra time so that you can show you have level design in mind too? Am I overthinking again? Uh, yeah, well, the simple fact is, like, as an environment artist, you won't be doing level design, right? In, like, a lot of cases. Level design is its own thing. And if, if you really want to go into level design, then you have to do, uh, more in-depth than what we think level design is actually is as an environment artist, right? Um, I'll, I'll explain, like, I think what we think about level design is if it's kind of playable, right? But level design is actually also more like, oh, what is, what is a person feeling in this moment? Like, how can we, how can we influence that with the, the architecture of the level, right? Like the base foundational structure of the level. Um, it's just that I had in mind that our environment artists work side by side with level artists. Uh, interesting, because level artists are environment artists in most cases. Or are you, or do you mean like environment artists working together with level designers? Is that what you meant? Oh, level designers, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, um, level designer is, level design is, is like its own thing, like I said before, right? So it's like way deeper than, um, no, wait, instead of me explaining it, how, how do you perceive level design? What does level design mean to you in this, in this case? Let's look about it that way. Like, maybe even, like, a more applicable thing is, uh... What would you do differently if you want to show off level design, like you're saying, right? Like, making it playable. Where's my... Read stuff. Do I need to, like, refresh it? Good now? Oh, okay, there they are. Tiny boys. Um, I think that's good. What do we have now? Maybe like the, the density might be a little bit. So if we set this to 200. And then set this to like 70 or something. Yeah, okay. Good. Getting some nice variation in now, right? What we want it. I think what I'm missing, it's very low at this point, right? What do we make? What else do we have? But this is also pretty low as well. Then maybe we can make like a taller version with this. Or maybe what we could do as like a quick fix is potentially just like... It's stretching it a little bit, but whoa! This is like way too bendy, though. So I think like that. I'm looking for something that like shows up a bit more. That's why I'm scaling them up currently. As if like being careful of the spacing of the level. Okay. Um, I mean, it can also... It, can always be like a benefit but like yeah you you have to think about it in a way where you don't want to become a level designer right so it's kind of like a cherry on top if you're taking that into account anyway but i think it's pretty pretty hard again 
to know what you should be doing because level design is so specific on the on the kind of game and like the camera and like your interactions with the environment right um what, what could be cool is if you say like hey look this is a first person game right or like imaginary game you're not making a full thing but like this is supposed to be a level out of a first person game and then uh and then kind of work within the restrictions that that gives you right that could maybe be an interesting one but yeah i feel i feel like uh route one is saying the same thing right like the priority is the art side if you want to become an environment artist and like the rest of it is like a cherry on top of things Because I also, just to give some context to that as well, right? Like, the level design that I know, uh, I learned from level design in the industry, right? Like, not from, from anything before. To give some additional context there. Oh, see, now we're getting some nice variation. Like, the, the weeds are kind of popping up a bit more. That's kind of what I wanted. We can probably tweak that with... Um... And some scaling so let's say wheat clump we just change that to like one instead of five and then 1.5 see yeah that's nice. I think the density will need to dial that down a little bit. Say five, and this is a hundred, so we cut that in half. Yeah, getting some nice variation in there. I'm trying to make my environment playable or walkable in a sense, but I feel like I'm stressing myself out more than I should. Yeah, if you already feel that, don't do it. It's quite simple, right? Like, if if it's adding, like, a burden that you're totally not comfortable with on top of all the burdens that you already have on the art side, don't do it. Just make it look pretty, right? Um, because I'm going to be honest, like, I... When, when, when I was working... Uh, on Far Cry, right? We work very closely with level design. Um, but it was still a back and forth, right? Like, I would try to keep in mind like all the restrictions that they had set up. But my job is to just make things pretty, right? And to tell a story. And then they'll oftentimes just push back and say like, hey, look, like the stuff that we have here, it's too, it's too impactful on the navigation mesh, which is used for a traversal of AI, right? That was one of the, well, one of the things that we had to keep like a lot of stuff in mind with. Um, but yeah, like your main thing is still making stuff look pretty, right? That's your main, uh, that's why they hire you, right? As an artist, that's your main focus. Sweet, so we got this working. What else do we want to do? Let's see, what was this one based on again? Oh, that was also pretty, pretty low down, right? Thanks for clearing it out. Yeah, no worries. No worries at all. Just if you're already like the the advice that I oftentimes give is you got to be able to compartmentalize the challenges that you put on yourself, right? And uh, I've run into that trap like a lot of times myself, right? Especially with designing stuff. Like you have this idea for a cool looking environment, but that also means that you're trying to, you're trying a new workflow, right? In this case, I was trying out the mid poly workflow. Um, and it also meant that I had to design everything myself, which is a completely different thing to what you're normally responsible for, right? 
Uh, and that just adds too much pressure and oftentimes leads to you not finishing stuff. Uh, or in this case, me not finishing that ever. Right, so I think it's, it's more about like slowly building up to expand your skill set, but like in a in a way that is very sustainable for yourself and your growth. Because yeah, like just over challenging yourself can lead to like a lot of frustration as well. Hmm. Got this one up next. Oh, we didn't we didn't really scale this one up, right? We have a lot of dead space on our UV, so maybe we might have to remap this one. So I'm gonna try and keep it a little bit more non-destructible. If we can. I have like an end. It's interesting though that you already wanted to think about like level design. So that might be something to explore in the future, you know? To Geo, transform. Yeah, I'm currently doing an environment art course with free time with Tiago Klavke. Yep. It's awesome. Focusing a lot on gameplay, it makes the environment so much harder. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Because it adds like another another layer onto it, right? And it's like a whole big thing onto itself. I honestly think if you're trying to get into the industry, it's more of a nice to have, right? If you're if you're if you want to become an environment artist right in that in that respect uh I, th I think a lot of the stuff like gameplay wise or other restrictions that you have you usually learn on the job right because making awesome looking art and like telling a story is already hard enough by itself and like complex enough and um, that oftentimes like all the stuff you add on top of it is just yeah but what unnecessary as well. Even though it can also be like an additional attraction point, right? Like if you're if you're in a tough job market and you wanna you wanna stand out, like knowing what to do with level design can also make you ha help you stand out, right? But you don't you, you have to be careful with that because you also don't want to end up with being like a jack of all trades and a master of none, right? I think that's also very important. So it's like, yeah, it's cool that you, you also know level design, but if you, in very brutal terms, right? Like, uh, I'm, not, I'm not pointing out anything, anyone specific, just in general, right? If you show off like a mediocre uh, environment art portfolio with also like some knowledge of level design, then you're not really selling anything, right? Like you need, you need to have one thing that stands out and then like a whole bunch of stuff that you're interested in and kind of know something about. I think that's, that's a way better way of like trying to sell yourself, especially in the beginning, because the thing is always going to be like if you're going into a job especially at bigger studios you're going to have to specialize anyway right yeah
Hey Admiral, welcome back. But that's awesome though. How uh shitty podcast, how how is that whole course going? I mean he knows what he's talking about. Been following him for like a long time. It was like an inspiration for me when I started, so. Can't can't uh, imagine it's gonna be bad. Uh, so. Did I not? What am I doing here? So messy. Whatever. Yeah, there's so much to discover, you know. I think I think honestly that's a real thing for beginners as well, is that there's so much to discover, so much to do, so much to learn that it oftentimes becomes overwhelming just by that by itself. But you gotta be careful how you manage all that stuff too. Oh, Rat1, you're working on your diorama with this tool? So I'm changing it to God of War to a Viking diorama and add more to it. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Which is really good, really worth the money, but it's going to take a long time before the environment is done, probably four months or even more. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the, the environment that he made for the course already took him like a year to complete, right? I mean, that's with the caveat of also structuring it and like making it good for like actually learning stuff, right? So it's not just making the environment itself, but... Well, let's do the thing here. All coming in with the good suggestions. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's more than fair. It does look a bit like the other one. Let's continue. Uh, transform. Randomize. Don't want to randomize that. I just want to randomize... I want to randomize Z axis as intended. Not really, huh? That's not working. Play around with this a little bit. Do clean this up a little bit as well. Give it a little bit more geo. Of course, it's super well made though. It's crazy to think he made it in his free time. I hope that when I'm done, you will get to see it as well. Yeah, why not? I can't see, I can't see why not. Just send it over, right?
This goes a little bit too crazy though. I don't like the arc that's making. Maybe... Instead of like scaling it. Keep it a little bit more subdued. Hey Danny! Go off and catch some sleep. You deserved it. No worries. Thanks for being here as well. I'm from Zeev. So something, something like this, huh? So that we have like the two layers going on. Put some more variation into this. Rotate it because I think it's still the same. Is Ivy still here? Get out of here. Just remove like a couple of random ones. And we'll do some manual tweaks, you know, a little. Uh, Mazel Tov, the course from Tiago Klafke. So, I don't know what is it called, actually. Let's see if I can find it and then I can link it. Environment Art Mastery, I think. Tutorial... I'm an art mastery. Uh, let's see if I can link it. Give a shout out. People making good, good content. There you go. That's the one I think. Yeah, this stuff has been like a big inspiration for a long time. <clears throat> Another aspect I feel like I'm overthinking is being truthful to the concept art thing. I would love your thoughts on it, if you please. Oh, it's very simple. Change it if you can improve it. It's very... It's a very simple explanation, right? But, like, that's also kind of how it works in game development too, to a certain degree. Where, if you think you can improve it, you can bring, like, meaningful change to it, then just do that. Because what that also does, it also shows like uh, your potential employers that you can think for yourself and it shows you like your artistic insight. And also it, it's just a very good skill to have, I feel, where you can show off that you uh, can look at something and improve it, right? Instead of just doing replication work to diminish it a little bit. I think that's also like a very important factor, right? Where you want to show off that you as an artist are comfortable with also changing things up and improving where possible. I'm not sure how this leaf is going to look. Probably going to depend on angle and the size that we go for in the end. I honestly don't know what we need to call this now. So should we, we just call it like single again? Not sure. So this is weed clump, right? We have one here. 
I'm just gonna call it a placeholder for now. Scale down a little bit. Do the same thing that we did with this one. Uh, no, maybe not with that one. Try this one instead. Then, uh, ground foliage, weed, go to, yes, oh, we'll need to set the transforms again. First, let's rotate it on this axis. And let's turn this right down, shall we? It's quite nice. Let's keep that one. Oh, what am I doing? Stop. Stop. Scale. We have this collection now. That's going to be Weed Clump 02. I'm going to get that in as well. Oh. Uh, Set this. Yes, zero two. Sorry. Did that answer the question, Alduin? When it comes to using a concept. I know it was like a very simple explanation for once. Didn't go on a rant for like a couple of minutes. <laughs> Think that's much. That's good. We are getting a lot of weeds in though. So we'll need to... Well, we're doing that constantly, right? Like we're tweaking. We are tweaking the uh, the density constantly. It's just that I wanted to hear from someone else to truly be myself. <laughs> That's fine. See, the more assets that we add, like the more density that we're gonna get, and it's a bit too much. So let's yeah, so this oh, this is a clump. So let's change that to a single one. Just change that to and then set this down. Maybe set this down as well. How, how are we looking?
the shader, like the material is completely broken, so. Like the variation that we're getting though. Feels a bit I feel the newest ones are a bit too big. Maybe let's just change that up real quick. I feel like we're pushing everything in like the same sort of category. The same sort of size. May or may not be bad. Let's see. Sweet. So. Yeah, because I don't necessarily want to just them to stand out that much. It's almost a balancing act, you know? Like, it's constantly tweaking, refining, seeing how stuff looks. Until you get it right. Still here, though? hard to tell sometimes. Oh, that's not a clump. Oh, maybe... Let's just force refresh it, right? So if we... Go here, let's say 26. And 49. Let's have another look. Oh yeah, there they are. Nice. You're pretty good. I think if we then make like more additional like very small saplings that we can also scatter in it it's gonna look quite nice especially in the forested areas because i think what we'll what we'll need to do is we'll need to tweak the scattering of this right where if you have a normal if you have normal grasslands you're gonna have grass and like some weeds right like maybe some of these bigger ones but not necessarily clovers, because I think... Wait, well, I might be wrong. I just made the assumption that they grow in, like, partially shaded areas, right? But we need to have a look at, like, where they grow and, like, how we can scatter them this way. So we'll probably have less weeds in, like, the, the raw uh, grass fields. And then once you get into the forest, that's when, like, the the ground forest stuff comes in, right? Well, I like how this blends together way better now. I'm going to get some really nice results. I'm actually quite curious, let's see. So if we... This one is not used. Um, what is floor? Just has an empty one. I guess we'll use that. Grass density 0 0.5. Okay. Uh, let's go to like a full area. Oh, here they are. Okay. Oh, it's because of the scaling thing, right? Yeah, and then once we start bringing like all the colors together a little bit more, 
think that's gonna look pretty nice. We'll have to do a lot of tweaking on all these colors. The textures for sure. If it was highly dense forest, it would be less stuff on the floor with vegetation. Yeah, I got some... I think I got some... Some breath here, right? Like, it depends on... How much... Sun penetration you get, probably, when it comes through the leaves, right? Or, like, through the trees. Yeah, there's, there is, like, lots of small stuff growing, but... It's very small, right? But I think in this case... We'll have some weeds and we'll have some clovers and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll have to see. I'll need to do like a deep dive into it. Because this is totally different, right? This is kind of irrelevant. More like a rainforesty kind of thing. So yeah, for sure. Just need to keep tweaking. playing with the density as well because at a, at a certain time it also just becomes noise right so that's why we need to like make sure that we don't have it feel like noise for example this kind of stuff the grass don't necessarily need it the layers are quite nice Grass roots, we've got branches, leaves in there. Cool if you create something where the position of the light of presentation is different. Yeah, there's actually a system like that in Unreal. Uh, so I'm kind of using the base system, right? Uh, but there's actually another system that has like a bunch more parameters built in. So where you can control what grows into the shadows and what grows into the light and like it even has control over like oh does this tree drop seedlings and like how much like what kind of seedlings does does it grow like that kind of stuff like i still need to to look into it but it does have like uh like that i think at a certain point i'm just gonna have a deep dive into that stuff I've never used it before. So, uh... Oh. Wait, this doesn't have the saplings in it. Right? That's a different... Do you know the name of it? Uh... No. I've... I don't even know... I don't think I have it in the scene anymore. Because I used to have a volume that scattered it, but I think I removed it. Let me let me see. It was like procedural something. Let's have a look. Uh procedural mesh component? I don't think that's it though. Or was it already enabled? There's a couple of things, right? Like the procedural blocking volume is also relatively simple, I think. I think it's still a different system where it just scatters just based on a volume, right? And what you give it. Um, but there's like also the more advanced stuff in it. Just don't know what it's called anymore. Let's switch in here. Field system actor. No, I can't think of it. Let's quickly Google it. Do -do -do. So, procedural foliage. Yeah, that's the thing you were talking about, right? Is it this one? Look, so foliage type. Uh, 
Filtry. Shade radius? Okay, it might be this one then. Average spread seeds per step. Seed density. Maximum age. Shadow. It might be this one, but I remember it had like a bunch more volumes. Okay, let's have a look. So, uh, procedural foliage volume. It might be that. Have a quick look. No, did I remove it? I think so. Because you have to enable it in like the project settings, I think. Yeah, it might be that. But it had like it had like way more options though. Like you could take where like certain certain stuff grows in the shadow or not, or like yeah, like how far the the seeds of the trees would go and like spawn like new instances of trees. Like it was it was super in depth when I saw it. Uh, so what were we doing? We were looking at the shrubs, right? Because we're combining these two when it comes to the the, the ground floor, like the the foliage, the the forest floor. Sorry. Let's go for two. Let's just set everything to two, right? I want less. So this stuff. That's in the forest, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess what you could do is if you want that kind of stuff to a certain degree, right? You would make... You would make um, predetermined clumps of assets, right? So that it's not just like a single tree, but you would actually have a tree with some moss on the bottom, maybe some rocks scattered next to it, and then maybe like smaller clumps that grow next to it, and then blend that into a procedural volume, right? Something like that, where you're combining unique stuff with a procedural volume, and then you just make like variations of clumps, right? Or like clusters of trees. Uh... I think that could be like an interesting way of approaching it too. Because it all depends on how heavy that system is, right? Because that system might be like freaking awesome looking, but then it might also be like heavy as well. Um, I honestly don't know because... Yeah, it depends on how it gets converted, right? Because if it's procedural, then... It has to do some runtime stuff, I'm assuming. I don't know. I'm not a tech artist. <laughs> yeah, I think this is coming along quite nicely. Uh, what we'll actually do is... Hmm. What should we do next time? Like, in terms of, do we want to Focus on the texturing next time and finish that up. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is a good place to kind of end it, right? We've been going on on this voltage for a while. Uh, the rest of it is just like very repetitive. Um, very well repetitive, right? And like incremental changes where I just need to cut out like a bunch more stuff, make like a bunch more variations. Uh, and then we should be good. Oh, it's overcasting Greece. Going for a walk. Yeah, do it. Go for a walk. It's awesome. Thanks for the stream. No worries. Happy to have you here as well. So yeah, I'm thinking that I'll make like a bunch more variations. Maybe, maybe do the texturing as well. Or... Would people love to see like the, the sculpting phase and like the texturing phase? Maybe we could keep that for next time as well. That would also be quite interesting to stream. Um, 
I think that could actually be quite interesting. If we do like a little bit of a sculpt to sculpt and then do like a little bit of a texture on all of this stuff, make it look proper. Uh, I think that could be good for next time. Where's my little book? What else do we have to do? Like, and I think once we, once we've done like most of this, like biome stuff, right? Or like most of this ground foliage stuff. I probably want to focus on either making um, blueprints or the carpenter camps or uh, refining some of the assets for it, right? Because I want to get these camps in like a good state that we can actually get something, something finished. Just do like a whole bunch of detailing on like the assets and like make nice... Uh, Nice setups for it. It'd be interesting. Yeah, I think let's let's do the texturing next time. Sculpting and the texturing next time, and then behind the scenes, I'll probably like make more clusters and kind of get it all set up so that it all looks good and it's all in the engine. And we just have to tweak the textures a little bit. Can you show us how to create an asset from start to finish? If you're talking about like high poly to low poly baking, um, probably not because that's not what what I do here. I'm gonna be honest. Like all of it, uh, I can I can show you how I do it for this environment, for sure. Yeah, we could do that. But I'm using pre-existing textures that I've made, right, for the most of it. So it's not following the traditional pipeline of uh high poly and then baking it down onto low poly and all that stuff that yeah we could definitely do that i think that would be something for maybe the next stream after that where i make like a bunch of new assets uh maybe for the carpenter area i don't know what we want to make could be it could be interesting yeah yeah okay i'll keep it in mind maybe that could be good <laughs> just how to properly unwrap with a titleable texture uh yeah we could definitely look into that bye shady podcast thanks for being here could definitely look into that yeah it's just like the whole pipeline we're probably not gonna do because that's not what this environment is about um but yeah i'll keep it in mind okay i'm gonna go as well uh, I appreciate everyone for being here. Thanks so much. Uh, if you like all of this stuff, feel free to subscribe to the channel as well. Check out beyondaccent.com for more of this uh, good stuff and like environment art resources. And if you want, join the community as well. We appreciate that too. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go. Thanks all for being here. And I'll see you next Wednesday. We're Work in Progress Wednesday. Bye, everyone. Oh yeah, have a nice weekend. Thanks, George. <laughs> Bye, Jeremiah.